Hello, everyone. Hello, David. Hello, Pagos. Hey, Zach. Hey, Pagos. Hey, um, so guys, so we are live right now and our friends are actually uh, watching this um, video. So um, the reason why we are having this uh, video is actually to share with everyone the preparation that we have done so far and what lies ahead of uh, FunctionX mainnet launch. As you know, FunctionX mainnet launch is very, very close. Um, the criteria of the mainnet launch is actually to have 20% stake FX token in our staking pool. So right now we are over 90%, which means that any time, it could be in hours, it could be during uh, this AMA, or it could be days um, when we hit the target. And once we hit the target, seven days from hitting the target, mainnet uh, will be live. So with me today, we have David, which is, everyone is familiar with David. David is our president of FunctionX Foundation. So um, David, do you wanna say hi? Hello everyone, we're really excited about this because this has uh, you know, been brewing for a while and we're super excited about the launch. Mm. And uh, as you know, uh, David and I, we have shared uh, quite a bit um, in the previous AMA. So um, we will dive in and tell you more of the concrete implementation. And we are also very happy today that we have uh, Yos Ginting with us. Uh, we call him Pa Yos. So Pa Yos is actually a council member of uh, FunctionX uh, Foundation. He's been with us for a long time. And this is the first time uh, finally that he's showing his face um, to us. So Payos join us from Singapore. So Payos, um, please um, give a brief introduction. Thank you, Zach. And hi, everyone. Um, I've known Zach and uh, Pa Kiki and a little bit later, uh, David, uh, for quite some times already. In fact, with regards to uh, Pundi X and Function X, even the Function X has not started. Um, I already known uh, Zach when he and Pakiki started uh, Pundi X. And as a council member of the foundations, uh, I have the privilege to know much closer about the team and somewhat also more independently. And I think in short, my opinion, of the team does very well in the four um, key parameters that I usually look at um, in the blockchain uh, uh, space. The team member, as we can I think all agree they are one of the most dedicated and the most passionate in the space. The tokenomics, very well explained. The network activity, you know it very well. You are part of it. And the collaboration with others. When El Salvador announced, Zach immediately offered free Pundi X and got very well responded. And even before, I have been involved with Zach trying to bridge with Indonesian chambers of commerce and industry in Indonesia. <clears throat> so that's probably enough, Zach, for me as an intro. I will share more later on on how, how I might be able to contribute for the uh, uh, team success. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Payus. Um, in fact, uh, Payus wears uh, many different hats. He's a leader in the blockchain space in Southeast Asia, uh, especially in Indonesia. He's actually uh, the head of uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, of Indonesia, which is the largest uh, merchant network uh, in Indonesia, and Bios is leading this. And later on, I think you will also share with us how uh, potentially we can do a lot of things, uh, especially uh, due to the good news coming out from Indonesia recently. Um, and of course, uh, you are by uh, education a doctor in uh, theoretical and computational uh, chemistry. So I think um, your uh, assistant to the council and also FunctionX uh, is very, very um, appreciated. Um, all right, guys. So uh, let's, uh, let me just share the screen.
Um, all right, so a little bit of recap. Um, it was actually in uh, August uh, 2018 that we uh, announced the FunctionX project uh, to the world. Um, I remember when we announced that uh, it actually happened in Bali. Uh, so David and Bios, we were all there and we announced it uh, to the world. And uh, there's a lot of excitement uh, surrounding it. And uh, it has taken us like from 2000, August 2018 to now. So almost three years uh, in the making uh, in this process. Uh, in the process, we, we learned a lot. We made some mistakes, uh, but it is great that we are finally at the doorstep uh, of the launch. One thing that we have uh, stressed is that we want to allow the community to participate in the launch in the sense that FX token holders are required to actually stake their FX token to reach 20% of the total current supply of FX to unlock the FX mainnet, which is what we call the FX core. So uh, some will ask us, why, why do we need um, the community to participate uh, to reach a 20% threshold to unlock this um, mainnet. Uh, why don't we just launch it right away? Uh, we have mentioned it many times, the, the reasons behind it. Um, David, um, you, you stress it many times, why we need to do that and the rationale behind it. Right, because if we're ultimately going to become a truly uh, decentralized ecosystem, then you have to have that kind of broad participation. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you, if you launched it immediately and we could do it on our own, then that's a centralized system. And so it takes time uh, to build, to become a, a decentralized system. And maybe most important of all is by having it decentralized with this type of broader participation, we have greater security uh, for the ecosystem. And that's obviously a, a, a major concern for us. Hmm, uh, that's correct. So to add to the security part, um, as we know, a network that is secured by a uh, proof of stake, um, whenever there is a malicious actor that can take over 33.3% uh, of the network, he potentially can cause harm to the network. So what we essentially want um, all the community members and the token holders to do is actually to own a uh, part of the network because um, the consensus that is being created, the block that is being created every few seconds needs to get a consensus from the token holders by encouraging and in some ways requiring uh, token holders to come together and to have at least 20% of the current supply, we have secured the network prior to launch. So what this means is that once we launch the network, um, it will come with a secure uh, mechanism and uh, the susceptibility of being attacked is way lower. So uh, thank you guys for helping and staking into the pool. Uh, one question that arise uh, that someone have asked um, for the AMA is that what happens if the staking doesn't arrive at 20% uh, when the staking pool ends uh, on the 15th of June? So what I would rally the community is that to leave the token in the pool at least until 21st of June. And I would like to encourage and strongly emphasize to the holders, especially the bigger holders, the whales to actually stick into the pool because the criteria is actually to get 20% to launch the mainnet. Uh, what if we are stuck at 98%? What if we are, what we, what if we are unable to get to 100%? If we actually reach that uh, conundrum uh, by between 16 to 21st, what the foundation will consider doing is to actually incentivize more so that people continue to stake and increase staking so that we reach that 100%. We are very close right now. We are over 90%. So um, uh, that is uh, the plan. Nothing has changed. So uh, once we launch, um, the main net, we will have 20 to 25 validators that will validate the network. In the start, the validators consist of company hosted validator, which means that the company will first, with the help of the community, by delegating the community token to validator, to the, 
company hosted validator to help secure the network. So why a company hosted validator? There are various reasons. Uh, one reason is because the company hosted validator can start with a minimum amount of fees, which means that token holders that validate, uh, that delegate to company hosted validator can actually get and earn uh, the maximum reward possible. The second is obviously security reasons because we want to secure the network together with the community so that your token are not at risk with uh, the public validator. Of course, the ultimate aim is to allow public and community participation. In fact, we have done that in testnet 2 and testnet 3. Uh, many of you guys are actually part of the validator, which means that you actually created a validator on FX Cloud. Um, the process of creating the validator on FX Cloud is very simple, uh, non-coding required, and you can actually launch the validator. We will then open that uh, to the public, especially to the community, which have tested in testnet two and three. And ultimately, as one community member says, the code will also be available so that you can actually compile the code yourself and run validator uh, yourself. So that is the aim. I know that uh, Pa Yos, you are actually pretty active in participating in validating services. Um, uh, even uh, outside of Function X, you participate in various uh, validating services um, and, and et cetera. So uh, maybe you can share with us like, you know, uh, what are your experience as a delegator of a validator for governance in other blockchain, what we can learn and what we have done uh, better. Thank you, Zach. Uh, I think what's interesting with um, a Function X approach is it bridges between the complexity that many ordinary users are facing with easy to use in order to make sure that as many members of the community can participate. We are all understand that one of the key aspects of the blockchain is the decentralization, where the more participation, the more secure the network uh, will become. The problem is even the simplest blockchain wallet is actually quite difficult for the average user when they try to um, use it from, especially from those who have no experience uh, uh, before. So the approach from the functions it came to allow users to not only able to stake, but be able to participate in running the node by point and click is actually commendable. And that's a very, very good strategy as a start, give users the experience of actually um, um, running the node and not just uh, staking or delegating. And hopefully at a much later stage as the experience and the knowledge becoming widely um, um, received, then the more complex process can be uh, introduced to the community. And this is quite different with lots of other blockchains where to be able to run nodes, you really have to have substantial technical knowledge um, to actually to start. So another um, uh, big plus from the function team who uh, try to make it easy for the user. That's all from Isaac. Mm. And uh, David, you yourself have done a lot of uh, testing on FunctionX Cloud. Um, you are one of the uh, early tester in Testnet 2 and Testnet 3. Um, uh, what are your experience? Well, you know, I mean, what's been consistent uh, with, with uh, PundiX and with FunctionX is this whole idea of adoption, that we want widespread adoption. And so in order to do that with whatever we're dealing with, uh, it's got to be easy to use. Uh, and, and so I think what we've accomplished uh, and what we're you know, launching with is something that will be easy for anyone to use. To echo what uh, you know, Pakios has said, 
that you know if you want to become a node in other blockchains you really have to have coding experience and what we've done I, you know to use the the term dumb it down isn't really uh isn't really fair but there's the the user interface makes it so easy to use um and you don't need to know about all of the coding and all of the uh, you know, technical information that goes on behind. Uh, but I think we've made something uh, that will be, that's, that'll be fun uh, for people to use as, as well as educational. And there's gonna be, you know, there's, there's no getting around it. There is a, uh, you know, a, a learning curve in this. And I think that we've approached it in a step-by-step -step basis that will make it a fun educational experience for those people who participate. Mm, and in fact, the FX Cloud doesn't just allow uh, the node creation uh, without code. Um, our objective is to allow people to create a custom chain on Function X uh, without coding. So uh, a corporation, uh, a bank can actually come into FX Cloud and launch their custom chain uh, using uh, FX uh, Function X technology. And all these custom chain are all interconnected to our mainnet FX Core. So I think that is something that is like a really exciting because uh, we are making a validator creation codeless and we are making a custom chain creation codeless. Um, and true to our nature of allowing adoption for um, uh, everyday uh, people and everyday uh, corporation, whether it's small uh, or big. Uh, next, I would like to also share with you uh, what are the things that you will see with um, the Function X mainnet launch. Once FX Core is launched, we will have uh, the, the prerequisite requirement, which is an explorer um, similar to Ethereum, that there's a Etherscan blockchain explorer, and Function X explorer will also be live. And as always, all the transactions will be recorded on the blockchain. Explorer. Another thing that you will see is actually another new version of FX Wallet. Uh, so we will have a new updated version of FX Wallet. Um, I'm very excited about this FX Wallet because uh, users are able to bridge their FunctionX token in ERC20 to FunctionX blockchain through a very simple method. Right now, the way to actually bridge from uh, one blockchain to another uh, seems to be slightly uh, complicated. And the way that we allow it is to through FX Wallet. If you have an ERC20 FX token, you can actually bridge into FX Core. You can bridge in and you can bridge out, which means that your FX token will be able to be uh, liquid on both Ethereum and FX Core. Uh, why do we do that? Because Ethereum is a big ecosystem. There's a lot of existing and uh, good infrastructure in Ethereum, whereby we want to also leverage. But at the same time, we want a higher speed environment, cheaper fee environment on FX Core, which means that your FX token will be able to transferable from Ethereum to FX Core uh, and out. And of course, uh, being able to live in uh, two chain or even more chain uh, doesn't mean any, um, uh, um, uh, any inflation in the token supply. The token supply will always be the same, which means that if you transfer from Ethereum to FX Core, your token from Ethereum will disappear and the token will reappear in FX Core. Uh, all this, can be done easily on the FX wallet and also on our webpage. So once you transfer from FX token uh, in Ethereum to FX core, you can then uh, use the token and stake it in the validator. All this process is actually very easy and very evident uh, from the screenshot. So um, the screenshot uh, on the right hand side shows that you can easily delegate it and you will know the result of the delegation. So I think uh, that is also a very simple way to do it. And in fact, um, we have received uh, quite a bit of feedback uh, from
from our decentralized wallet, uh, FX wallet. And uh, one of them is actually uh, the feature to allow uh, different tokens, uh, especially DeFi tokens, to be able to be deposited and earn uh, interest uh, in a feature, what we call a crypto bank. Um, crypto bank, it's uh, really a way for people to you know, earn uh, 5 10 percent, maybe even more APY through their regular tokens such as Ethereum, WBTC, uh, Uni, and of course, uh, FX and Pundix is earning a uh, pretty lucrative uh, from the staking pool. Um, David is a big fan of uh, testing all this out. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, what do you want to say? Hey. Because, you know, I mean, DeFi is obviously kind of the area uh, that has the greatest potential. And uh, I, you know, I really wanted to participate in it. But I have to admit that, uh, you know, going through uh, other platforms was challenging. Uh, Zach knows because he helped me uh, in my first, uh, you know, swap and deposit. And what we've done, uh, again, is to, uh, you know, to encourage adoption. We've made it a simple and very fun process. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm like what they call kind of a typical hodler. And so, you know, I mean, I, I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, switching on exchanges and stuff. I like to hold my coins, but of course I want them to be, you know, earning interest. And so, uh, you know, the, the crypto bank function that we have on the wallet is super simple to use. Um, and, you know, you're able to put uh, your, your crypto to, to use and earn money from it. So that's, you know, one of those functions that we're putting in, again, to encourage adoption uh, of, of, the, of the whole DeFi potential that's out there. Mm, uh, indeed. Um, after testing out uh, so many DeFi solutions, I think we managed to come up with a simple way to allow people to stake and earn uh, interest uh, in a decentralized way, which means that people actually own their keys, uh, their token uh, or my token, uh, my keys, my token. And that is uh, the ethos of FX Wallet, which means that, you know, it's not just only for uh, FX token holders or PUNYX token holders uh, to stake from the staking pool, which um, actually earns a 50 to 100% APY um, uh, these days, uh, but also other tokens. So like Ethereum and other tokens, they are able to put into what we call a crypto bank and secure um, a very attractive uh, APY comparable to the exciting DeFi product out there minus uh, the complexity. So um, I, I really love the product. It, it's, it's very simple, but it is able to help achieve uh, uh, tremendous uh, things. So uh, FX Wallet will also be a, will updated uh, when we launch the mainnet. And one of the key uh, focus of the update is actually allowing um, FX token holder to bridge into FX core from Ethereum and also delegate your valid, uh, delegate into the validator. When you launch FX Wallet uh, in, uh, when the mainnet is launched, you will see a list of validator which you can choose to delegate uh, your tokens. Um, the validator uh, is now named after um, the city names uh, of our uh, our team members. So we, uh, you know, say Jeremy is in New York, so that's a New York validator, and etc. So uh, I think a good amount of our friends that is watching, that is staying up late. Um, uh, today to catch this uh, show is to want to know what are the parameters and the proposed rate of your FX token, which means that when you delegate your token to a validator, what are the um, earnings that you will be getting? Um, of course, the objective of delegating to validator is to help secure the network in a proof of stake system, we need the participation of the token holders to be able to secure the network. And of course, while securing the network, every new block that is being created will have um, a new set of FX token that is being rewarded to people that help secure the network, which is 
uh, the validator and the delegator. All right, so let's look at the numbers here. Uh, there are uh, six main uh, category, all right? Uh, the first one is actually um, the target stake ratio, which means that we hope that um, in the ideal case, 51% of token holders are able to stake uh, into uh, the blockchain. What we have proven over um, the two months is that we can rally 20% of the token holders to stake uh, without um, the, uh, the active uh, participation, participation from the foundation, which means that the foundation doesn't get involved uh, much yet into the staking process, which we will when mainnet launch. Uh, so that 20% uh, is a very good start and our target stake ratio is actually 51%. Sometimes it goes down less than 51%, sometimes it goes more than 51%. The tokenomics is designed so that we incentivize to go closer to 51%. If the stake ratio is lower than 51%, what happens is that the actual uh, inflation rate, which means that uh, the tokens being created in every new block increases, which means that people that help secure the network like yourself will be able to get more tokens to reach that 51%. And if it's bigger than 51%, um, the token that is being created, every block will decrease. So it's a moving figure. The minimum rate is actually 17% and the maximum rate is actually 41%, which means that the inflation rate is fluctuating between 41% and 17%. We start with a 35% inflation rate, which is the upper right number that you see. So that is our starting uh, number. And in the beginning, um, obviously the target stake ratio will be less than 51%. Hence, um, the inflation rate will inch towards that 41%. And as we reach the 51%, it will inch down back to a minimum of 17%. So what does that mean for you as a token holder? Uh, it means that um, when you delegate your token to secure the network, you are entitled to receiving a portion of say the initial uh, inflation rate of 35%. Um, but um, if, <clears throat> but since not everyone is securing uh, the network, uh, assume there's only 50% that is securing the network, the initial inflation rate of 35% is actually distributed to half uh, of the people, uh, but not all the people, not all the token holder, which means that um, the token that you are getting will be more than the 35%. Of course, that 35% also includes a 40% of a ecosystem liquidity and uh, community pool uh, allocated. What it means is that initially uh, the number say 35%, 40% of the 35% will be allocated for the ecosystem and liquidity and the other 60% for people that validates <coughs> the network such as FX token holders that puts their token into uh, the validator. So a question would be, so what am I getting as a FX token holder, really? Um, again, uh, the number fluctuates. It's strongly advised to read the April hash out article and also to use our calculator to try to calculate what you are getting. Um, but a baseline uh, scenario is that um, the um, the inflation rate will be high in the beginning, which means that uh, the so-called APY that FX token holders are getting will be lucrative. It will be pretty uh, lucrative. And if I may, uh, one of the more exciting uh, APY that you will see out there 
in fact, if you talk about like the the more uh, mainstream tokens, um, I think we are one of the most exciting APY, if not the most. Uh, but again, read the article, use the calculator because the numbers are always moving. Uh, it moves based on how many people are staking, um, uh, what are the commission rate of the validator, which right now the company hosted validator is charging 1%, which means that if you are entitled for 100 token, uh, the validator will take a uh, 1%, which means that you will get 99 and the one goes to the validator for the risk and responsibility that the validator is giving out. So again, um, we are very excited about uh, the rates. Uh, the rates will fluctuate to help secure the network. Uh, and we think that uh, the reward for the token holders that delegate will be lucrative. All right. Um, next, uh, we can look at some of the stages of uh, the FunctionX uh, mainnet. Uh, the first stage is actually the mainnet launch itself, which is helping to govern the mainnet FX core. So what we have discussed so far are actually things from the first stage. We have a blockchain explorer, which has, we have a upgraded FX wallet, to allow moving between multi-chains, you know, moving between Ethereum and also uh, FunctionX for our FX token. So this is uh, the first stage, uh, which means we help make the mainnet stable, secure, and also rewardable for early participate early participant who comes in and secure the network. So every block, uh, averaging eight seconds, will uh, will create new FX token rewarded for uh, those that help secure the network. This is the first stage. So when first stage comes in, uh, in a matter of weeks um, uh, or one week, uh, depending on when uh, we hit the 20%, um, the network is fully launched. Everything that you want, that we expect from a network, it will be launched with low fees, uh, high speed transaction, and also um, a very strong participation uh, from the community. Now, let's move on to second stage. Um, uh, we, our plan is to not stop at uh, launching the mainnet. We are not uh, resting uh, our laurel, so to speak. Um, we want to go to the second stage, the third stage. It is a evolutionary, always improving mainnet. Uh, the second stage, will involve a lot of work with uh, PundiX. So um, I know that many of the PundiX token holders are also FunctionX token holders and, and vice versa. So um, uh, this is something that uh, we are very grateful about. And right now, uh, PundiX is still hating uh, FunctionX, which means that uh, for lack of word, PundiX is monopolizing FunctionX uh, most of the people working on Function X are from Pundi X. Um, uh, for example, David ha has a dual role uh, in both organizations, uh, but ultimately Pundi X wants to make it more decentralized for Function X, which means that Function X should be able to grow with participation from uh, external uh, developer, external um, uh, leaders such as uh, Bayos and et cetera. Um, and before I dive into the second stage, uh, David, uh, do you have a, do you want to chip in on this as well? Yeah. It's just that, you know, uh, I, I, I like how you're explaining it in stages. And so uh, I hope that, you know, our community and other people appreciate that this is going to be an evolution uh, that we're building and, uh, while we're doing a lot of things internally and getting things started, uh, we're really looking forward to having, uh, you know, the community and uh, outside developers uh, build on and, uh, you know, continue to, to evolve the ecosystem uh, as a, you know, independent decentralized uh, system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ultimately, um, the validator should majority be from uh, outside of Pundiax, and we should have an active uh, developer community and leader community 
that is uh, outside of uh, Pundiac. So I think that uh, that will make Function X truly decentralized. And since Pundiac X plays a major role in Function X, uh, we also want to ask what can Function X give back to Pundiac X? What, uh, what improvement can Pundiac X and Pundiac X token holder get from uh, Function X? Uh, one very critical part uh, will unfold is the second stage, which is making uh, X post and also our other financial transaction on Pundi X on chain on a Function X custom chain. So guys, this is a very important uh, concept. Uh, FX Core, which is Function X mainnet, is a bridge chain. It's the parent chain. It's um, the brain and um, uh, the nerves that connect uh, different chain and different uh, use cases. So if Function X FX core mainnet is the brain, X post and Pundi X services are the hands and the legs uh, of the network. Um, why do I say that? Um, X post will be a custom chain uh, on Function X, which means that all the greatness, the goodies of Function X will be on X post. It will be high speed, it will be low fees on transaction, and things will be on chain. This will help us tremendously in the rollout of X post and the growth of X post, and also our financial services. Uh, on PuniX, which ultimately uh, is PuniX uh, focus. So we will have a lot of uh, exciting stuff going on on the second stage. And the focus is to create a custom chain for uh, Expos. Um, right now, internally, the project name is called Expos Chain, but uh, I think uh, maybe it will be called something else to, and to include everything that uh, that the financial payment uh, that we are doing, including a payment of X pass, a payment of X wallet, uh, et cetera. So that will be very exciting. So the X post chain, uh, the project name X post chain will be connected to FX core. And say, if there's another um, institution, say a bank that wants to create a custom chain using FX cloud, uh, uh, which we discussed earlier, he the, the company, that institution can also create a custom chain. So a custom chain by a bank uh, can actually talk to uh, Expo's custom chain through FX Core. So uh, that will be uh, very exciting because we plan to use F Expo's chain to power a lot of financial tools and services uh, on the FunctionX network. So that uh, will be truly exciting. Function X native, uh, Function X FX core native token is FX token, and X post custom chain native token is actually Pundi X, which means that on stage two, Pundi X token holder will also be able to bridge in and out of Ethereum and also into uh, Function X network into the custom chain. So basically, uh, the best of both worlds, uh, and that is very, very exciting, yeah. And next, I would like to bring the attention to a use case, uh, a case study. And the case study is actually the fourth biggest country in the world with 276 million population, a market which, um, we have uh, our roots from, we started from there, and a market which uh, Pat Yos uh, is very familiar. As I've said earlier, he's actually the head of Indonesian Chamber of Commerce uh, of Merchant, which uh, I think have millions of merchants, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Pat Yos, you can, you can share more later. So this is a, a market that uh, I think is worth highlighting uh, and I think we will let Payos share a little bit more about this. 
Okay, thanks, Jack. Um, just to clarify, uh, I'm the uh, my role in the Indonesian Chambers of Commerce and Industry is as the chairman of the International Trade Committee. Uh, the chamber has uh, many other committees representing the diverse sectors and business interests, but exactly because I'm leading the international trade, that makes it even more relevant to interact with um, the teams such as uh, Pundi X or Function X. Uh, Zach earlier mentions about the size of the populations in Indonesia. And it's not just the number of the population that is really uh, drawing um, lots of attention. It has the geographical spread so big. It has 13,000 islands. And in terms of the retail spaces, the AC Nielsen indicated that it has not less than 2.5 million uh, retail spaces. And interestingly, yesterday, uh, I visited the website of the Indonesian president. And the website, Zach, if you can show the um, screenshot of the website, mm -hmm. it actually mentioned that the growth, or they are at least working hard to try to grow the digital economy um, in the years ahead. Currently, there are 13.7 micro, small, and medium enterprises already onboarded in the Indonesian digital ecosystem. But the total micro, small, and medium enterprises uh, registered in Indonesia are not less than 30 million. So there is super big uh, potential for anyone with the right technology, the right approach, and red spirit to actually be part of that uh, um, success. The Minister of Trade, uh, the picture that you are seeing on the screen in the website mentioned that just for the food and beverages from the 3,700 roughly trillion rupiah, which is roughly about 257 billion US dollars, only 18 trillion is currently served by the new digital economy, which is only about 0.5%. So the potential is there. And it's also a country that, as Zach earlier mentioned, um, linked very closely with the root of Pundi X. Zach lived quite sometimes in Jakarta in the beginning, um, the early stage of the, the, the Pundi X. And blockchain as the technology, uh, as you can see from the screenshot uh, shown before, already received attention at the highest level in the country. Function X and Pundi X has the technology. Not only that, a working product that is suitable and potentially able to support them achieving their goal. So I think uh, we are in a very uh, unique situation. The COVID-19 to a certain degree has triggered these transformations of everyone trying to reduce the use of uh, cash, for example. Everyone goes online, etc. So. Uh, we can see that uh, Pune X and Function X should be in the right place at the right time to take advantage of that uh, momentum. Back to you, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, we're truly excited about this. Uh, the market is so big, 276 billion, and there are so many uh, merchants. And in fact, our roots, um, our initial objective was actually to serve uh, the Indonesian market of underbank uh, using our expo. So um, it's, we are very excited about this and the Function X technology will certainly help us achieve that. Um, and also a side note that, guys, we know that there's a lot of things happening in El Salvador and also uh, other parts of Central and Latin America and we are on top of it. Uh, right now, Expos is in over 30 countries um, and we are looking forward to more and El Salvador is definitely uh, one that is very exciting. Um, Paco and the rest of the team are actually uh, speaking to the top officials there. So hopefully the Bitcoin law is one that we'll see uh, and let people realize that uh, the super cycle and the adoption cycle will need adoption to happen. And what better adoption than a live 
ongoing operating hardware and software ecosystem that has proven to work. Crypto is not just about trading. It is a big part, but not all. Uh, getting the adoption will be the ultimate test for all crypto holders. So we are glad that um, all these are speeding up for us. We are looking very um, good on this. Next, um, stage two is about getting uh, Expos uh, services into uh, the FunctionX network to benefit from all the great uh, technology uh, features. Stage three um, will not happen like very, very soon, but it's already pretty much in planning stage, which is FunctionX also wants to service a very unique market, which is the synthetic and derivative asset market. I have a, a table here. Um, as you can see, um, this various sources actually credit derivative market as the biggest market, uh, way bigger than uh, crypto itself. And in fact, uh, I think some goes to even saying a 1,000 uh, what trillion dollar uh, market. And since FunctionX uh, is a network that allows custom chain to be created on the fly to connect to FX core, we have chosen the synthetic and derivative market to be one of the market that we want to be very active in, which means that tokens from different chain can move into FunctionX and be able to create synthetic and derivative asset in the network and using it to trade on the network, whether it's collateralizing uh, BTC or synthesizing oil from uh, FX or PUNYX token uh, in different various forms. And we will be able to fetch the price from on-chain Oracle to allow the trading of all these assets to be on-chain and fully transparent. I think this is a very exciting market um, that is growing uh, from a spot uh, uh, market order to a um, uh, futures options uh, market coupled with synthetic and derivative. Um, this is clearly work in progress. It is a stage three plan for FunctionX. And with this launch, uh, PUNYX as Expos will be able to offer many more different assets, whether it's uh, gold, or um, you know, SMP 500, et cetera, uh, to our user anywhere in the world. So we are very excited about that. Um, of course, it is still in planning stage. Our focus right now is to get stage one out in a week or a matter of weeks, and then start to roll out stage two, and then in stage three, which is the synthetic and derivative asset market. We are very excited about this. Um, you are sharing in, this in advance, but this is a, exponential growth sector market. Also, um, the community asked, what's the different role uh, of um, our different social network? We have a very active social uh, presence. Um, we are in a lot of places um, and we have recently created a FunctionX forum. So, uh, a community member actually asked, you know, uh, where should I be? Uh, oh, where, where can I ask questions? You have so many channels. Um, and I think FunctionX Forum plays a very special role. And David uh, is very active there. So why don't you tell us uh, the different experience on Twitter and the forum and, and even other social media? Right. So um, I have to tell you that this is one of the best surprises that I've had uh, in quite a while, because when we were discussing adding yet another channel of communications, uh, I was a little bit skeptical. So, uh, you know, my experience on, uh, on Twitter or on Facebook or even on Instagram has not been 100 percent positive. Now, I have to admit that we have uh, really incredible supporters within the community who, uh, who kind of come to the rescue 
Um, and, uh, you know, when, when people are, are uh, being hateful or negative, uh, there are generally, you know, really positive people within the community who, uh, you know, who speak up. And what this new channel with the, uh, the Function X Forum uh, provides is a more serious channel uh, for discussion. So I have to admit in the, uh, you know, the several weeks that I've been participating, I don't think I've seen the word moon mentioned once. No one talks about the, you know, the, the, the price of, of tokens or no one is blaming anybody. But in fact, there are very positive and creative and constructive uh, topics that are brought up. And um, as, as Zach will get to in a little while, we're gonna be talking about a reward token. And to be frank, the, the whole concept of the reward token and, and how we're developing it, uh, a lot of that has come from the forum itself with people offering really terrific suggestions. Um, the suggestions range from kind of more technical uh, to you know, what we're doing in terms of marketing, uh, nobody is judgmental. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there, uh, there's no profanity. Uh, people aren't put down. Um, so it's a, it's a really terrific uh, place for those who want to be uh, a, a creative and a constructive participant uh, in, in our projects. So uh, I really encourage those who, uh, you know, who, who might get a little bit weary of the uh, the noise that goes on in, in the other channels, in Telegram and in Twitter, to take a look at the, the uh, FunctionX forums. That's forum.functionx.io. Uh, and we really, we really welcome, uh, you know, again, constructive, and we're open to criticism. I'm not trying to suggest that, you know, we're only looking for good news. Uh, in fact, it's the criticism that is also very, very helpful, but it's criticism that is done in a constructive way. So, uh, you know, if you have ideas uh, that you'd like to suggest to us uh, and you'd like to have debated and discussed, please join us in the forum. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you, David. Um, there's so many great ideas coming up. It's really a breath of fresh air. Um, the poster that, that we use in the slides is actually designed by one of the community members and he shared it on the forum. Uh, very nicely done. And it's not just him. It's, um, there are so many great designs out there and great ideas bouncing around. Um, and, and the success of this forum will also allow us to move the forum in the right direction, which is functioning as a DAO uh, discussion forum, whereby a uh, user can actually vote on uh, what we call the FIP, right? Function X improvement proposal uh, on the forum. So I think that will, will give a lot of um, uh, active participation for uh, FX holder, not just staking, not just validating the network, but actually voting for a proposal, whether to pass or to fail. And in the instances of the synthetic asset, um, the, the votes can actually be used to, to decide uh, what kind of synthetic asset we want to create, whether it's an SMP 500, whether it's a, you know, uh, uh, Dow Jones or even other places in other uh, equities market all over the world uh, in different parts. So that will be uh, truly uh, exciting. And as you say, uh, one very interesting idea that came out from uh, the forum was actually a reward token uh, for uh, Pundiex uh, holder. So uh, let's take a step back and, and discuss uh, why this reward token is being proposed. Um, the reason why the reward token is being proposed are twofold. Uh, one is that we know that there are a lot of uh, airdrops and NFT going on uh, uh, right now. And Puniex token holders should be able to benefit from this. So the reward token is actually a mechanism to, for people to actually use it as a receipt or a claim for this kind of uh, different rewards. This is the first reason. The second reason is that uh, the reward token is designed in such a way that it is deflationary, which means that 
every time you make a transfer from your wallet to another wallet, which is not whitelisted, uh, your token amount actually decreases by 20%. So say, uh, David, today you have 100 token and you send it to uh, Bios or you send it to an exchange, uh, your 100 token would actually arrive to Bios as 80 token, which means that we want you to keep it. We don't want you to trade it. You have uh, the right to trade it, but we want you to keep it because it is meant for reward uh, mechanism. Uh, MPX exam is another token that uh, we don't talk about a lot. Um, it was initially created for NEM and then it moved to uh, BEP2 from Binance. But right now, Binance focus is actually on BEP20. Uh, so we will also integrate MPX exam in a way sunsetting MPX exam support uh, by merging uh, MPX exam uh, into the reward token system which means that the reward token will actually be available on uh, FunctionX uh, as a token and also BSC, Binance Smart Chain, as a BEP20 token. Um, I think uh, the PUNYX token holders will be able to stake and get a good uh, reward from the token uh, from first initially on Binance Smart Chain and also next on PUNYX Chain. Um, there will be no allocation uh, for the team, uh, zero, uh, uh, nor advisor, uh, nor developer, all will be allocated for PUNYX token holders and uh, MPX SM uh, holders, which are also PUNYX token holders. So what role does FunctionX play in this? Uh, FunctionX will be uh, the enabler for this because PUNYX will have a custom chain called uh, Expose Chain or PUNYX Chain uh, on the FunctionX network. And it is there, uh, PUNYX token holder will continuously be able to be rewarded uh, this reward token. So um, I think this is another example of an idea that came out from the forum, uh, which received support from the forum uh, and uh, also largely because a lot of informed uh, token holders are in the forum. We are really surprised by how uh, informed and knowledgeable uh, the holders are on the forum. And I think uh, this has a large support and uh, if it votes goes through, uh, it will also be a strong use case uh, for FunctionX. Uh, yes. All right. Um, let me just, okay. Um, these are all the slides uh, that we want to share uh, with everyone. So I think we are almost at the end uh, of the program. Uh, the live AMA, the pre-launch and the bucket list preparation for the mainnet launch. So um, I myself is truly excited about this. It's three years in the making nonstop uh, developing, trying, testing, and getting it there. And Testnet 1, 2, and 3. Testnet 1 was actually launched exactly this year, 11 of June, uh, Singapore time, uh, uh, a year ago. Yeah. Testnet 1 and Testnet 2 and Testnet 3. So Testnet 3 was launched on 31st of December uh, 2020. Many people, uh, not just uh, people from the team, but people, the token holders and community members have participated, uh, helped build uh, uh, the validator, become delegator, and also help tested uh, FX wallet. Uh, and from there, we did many more testing. And right now, uh, we feel that uh, it is secure, strong, committed enough for a launch that will happen anytime soon. So it is years in the making and we are one step towards that finally. So uh, David and Bayos, um, any last words before we wrap this up? Yes, you know, 2020 was a strange year, uh, you know, with, with the pandemic and everything. And um, one of the, uh, you know, one of the, the good things that, that came from it was that there was intense focus 
certainly within the team uh, on, on doing something constructive. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that it's just one year ago uh, today that we, that we launched, uh, you know, Testnet One. And during, you know, very, very hard times, the developers were still working nonstop, uh, whether they had to work from home or wherever. And I think, you know, 2021 uh, is going to be that year where uh, we're able to enjoy the, the fruits of that labor. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the, the, the pandemic uh, gets under control. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I can't be more excited uh, to see something uh, so positive and so constructive and so creative uh, as, as uh, you know, FunctionX mainnet coming out now. So, you know, I'm waiting. I'm hoping that that launch happens within, uh, you know, a few days. Uh, we're, we're, we're very close and we're watching, uh, you know, the progress numbers increase. And uh, so any day soon. And I'd really like to, to thank the community uh, that, that during, you know, 2020, which was a very hard year, the, the support from the community was unflagging and they, they've continued and it's only grown since then. Uh, and again, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, encourage those people who want to be in a, uh, a uh, constructive and positive uh, discussion, uh, you know, with the community about where we go and what we can be doing to, to, to join the forum. Mm. Bios. Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, we'll probably just uh, reiterating what uh, both Yuzak and David uh, mentioned. And I'd like to once again thanks the uh, uh, thanks our community who has been extremely loyal, extremely positive, uh, provided a lot of uh, input, <clears throat> um, which makes um, uh, both Pundix and Function X so much better than uh, when it uh, started. So again, you know, the momentum is. Is, is there. The market are big. We have a passionate team. We have uh, you know, a working uh, uh, product. And not only that, we have such conducive and very loyal uh, community within uh, Pundi X and Function X. So all signs are green. The opportunity is there. Um, we should be uh, uh, um, achieving what we, will, we, what we have been uh, planning and thinking all this time. Mm, yeah. All signs points to the star. We are, we are aligned. So I guess that's it from us today. And thank you once again. And uh, have a good day. Have a good evening. Thank you, guys. Cheers.